Hey, Sheetal, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Super duper. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and doing this conversation with me. And um, first, I just want to tell the audience how we met. All right. Um, so, guys, Sheetal, apart from looking gorgeous, she is this wonderful human being. I was at LSUC, Rajasthan, Sardar Shahar, and I tried to go for as many LSUCs as possible. And then I hear this name, Rishi. <laughs> Sounded like a woman. <laughs> I gotta pay attention, and I look back and I was like, "Oh, you know my name? Oh shit, she knows me, and I don't know what the hell. This is like horrible." <laughs> so, and then you told me somebody told you that you have to meet Rishi. Now we have to give credit to this guy, girl. Who was it? I forgot. Who was it that told me that you have to meet Rishi? <laughs> This was Gagan, the whom you had met. Uh, at LSUC in 2016. In the 2000s, so Gagandeep, dude, thank you so much for telling Sheetal to meet me because she shouted out Rishi, <laughs> and I was like, spent the next 30 minutes or more with Sheetal uh, discovering this fabulous thing that she's doing, which you guys are going to come to know about. So that's how we met at LSUC. It was a great call. We got busy with our stuff after that, but it was another very interesting incident that brought us back and. And I think uh, when she told me that uh, what she does is is medical clowning, is that the right word? Yes. Right. right. So, um, so and and her inspiration on back, watching the movie Patch Adams and that that movie was fabulous. I even cried a lot watching that movie. And so um, I thought we'd connect and we'd do an interview then. Like I was doing conversations with so many people at LSU because I love to meet the diverse set of people at LSU. And for those of you guys that don't know what is LSU, it's Learning Societies Unconference. Um, Manish Jain, Vidhi Jain, they uh, take out time and effort to get a whole and uh, there's a whole bunch of people, of course, involved in organizing that event. They do it once a year. It's a fabulous thing. If you go to whoisrishi.com and you just type LSU, you'll see lots of video interviews of me. Interviewing people uh, about who they are and what they do and how they show up at places like LSUC. It, it's diverse. I won't get into this right now because right now I want to talk about Sheetal. <laughs> so, so check out LSUC and um, and I also want to say how we reconnected uh, a couple of weeks back, right? Um, and this this is important, I think, and I most people uh, if they're watching this, and I'll also put the link to the video. That I watched, uh, okay. that completely made me rethink about asking, you know, and and how it's not you don't have to be ashamed of asking. And uh, and and Sheetal just reached out. I guess everybody was in a bit of a jam at this point. I, I was fortunate and blessed that I wasn't in the jam. And she just reached out. Hey, Rishi, you know, I'm I need some money. Uh, if you can, whatever you can contribute, contribute. I said, Yeah, sure, 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 no problem. And I contributed, and I think it's. It's it's more courageous for people to take that step and 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 ask because you never know somebody might just say no 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 and they'll think of it as like how can she be asking for money and you know all that shit that happens and I'm so happy that you asked because I was so happy to have the opportunity to give so that was brought us back again and I said hey Sheeta let's do this talk we missed it at LSUC let's do it and you agreed that so thank you so much. For being here and doing this with me, so awesome! And uh, yes, I would like to instead of going to your LinkedIn profile and reading your profile, <laughs> which I I say this on every <laughs> talk that I do with everybody, and I hate doing that. I prefer that people share their own journey and how it is they came to do what they're doing. So you can decide, you know, how far back you want to go, like for the day you were born, <laughs> and then tell us your journey, or you want to like. Cut to the chase after college and then share with us, or maybe as a teenager something inspired you, but you never did it. I don't know. Whatever you share your journey, tell us how you got into uh, medical clown. Okay, so let me now shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay, so uh, as a as a child, I was a very quiet, shy person, so nobody can imagine me as a clown. Whoever has seen me as a child. I was this person who used to just study, play with my dogs. Then I graduated, did masters, 
uh, I was in first year of MPhil when I got a call for teaching as a visiting faculty, and I was very scared. Like I had big time stage phobia, so I was not really sure that if I can do it. And then the first class that I had to teach was of masters level. Uh, level. So uh, I had to teach sociology to mass communication students, and of course they were big bullies. And I was this teacher who was like literally shivering. So that was my first stint with the audience kind of a, set, a setup. Uh, but then, yeah, so I enjoyed teaching. And then after MPhil, I got into teaching, and I was teaching sociology and social anthropology. And in 2014, I had a breakup, and I started traveling, and uh, that opened up a lot of avenues. And also, I started discovering that so whatever I've been feeling myself about me was not really correct. I loved meeting people. I loved talking, and this is what I discovered when I was traveling. And I think uh, it was in uh, January 2016 that uh, I went for a retreat to Ahmedabad, and there somebody introduced herself as a medical clown. And I grew up watching a lot of circus, so I thought, "What is medical clown? I had never heard of this term. I only knew of circus clowns, and mostly those stereotypical notions of a clown, uh, so who make people happy, who perform for us." I came back to Delhi and I started looking out what is a medical clown. I watched the movie Patch Adams and I was obviously highly inspired. And I thought it would be so beautiful to give purpose to a smile. And I used to be obsessed with smiling since I was a quiet child. I used to smile a lot and I used to get scolded for smiling too much at school because teachers thought I was mocking them. And then <laughs> that's how it it got me interested that I would really want to try this. So I. Message Dhara, who I had met in in the bus, saying, "Oh, can you please help me find somebody who is doing this in Delhi? And I would just want to go visit and try, maybe participate." She said, "Sorry, there is nobody doing this in Delhi." I looked out on Google also, nothing came across, and well, months passed by like this. I there was this back and forth conversation that we had. She said that she doesn't know, and one random. Uh, Time, she just threw this thought at me that why don't you start this in Delhi if you're so much interested? So she said that uh, somebody from Compassionate Clowns will come and uh, do the workshop. This is, uh, Compassionate Clowns is in Bangalore. So I said okay, and uh, but then the first thought was I have, I don't have a background in theater. I don't know what clowning is all about, and I won't be able to do it. How can I start this? And uh, I completely, outrightly dismissed it, but then no, I think it will. It stayed with me at my subconscious level, and because I was really interested, this sounded like a beautiful thing to do. So, uh, I think yeah, one random night I wasn't able to sleep. I wrote on Facebook asking how many people would be interested because we needed fifteen people and one hospital permission to get that workshop. And there were thirty-three responses, positive responses. Wow! And uh, it's just a post on Facebook. That's it. Yes, and a very random one saying, "Who all would want to make people smile, especially who are suffering at hospitals?" And there were thirty-three people who said yes. And so I thought, okay, fifteen to Iingi. So that's how it started. And then I wrote to the government of Delhi, Health Ministry of Delhi. Asking for permission to clown, so they liked the concept and they asked for meetings. We had a few meetings and then we were given permission of one hospital. And the director said that there is no harm in trying. Luckily, he had watched Patch Adams and he knew a little bit of medical clowning. Oh, so, that's good. Yes, that's good, yeah. and he said that even if uh, it does not work, maybe in an in, in in an Indian setting, then there would be no harm and shock. So let's do it next Saturday and. By that time, we could not do a workshop because this person was busy. And the first time we entered the hospital, we had no idea what we were going to do. There were just five people, including me, who turned up. <laughs> okay. And so, literally, with dinosaurs jumping in our stomach, we entered. And it's a government hospital, children's hospital. There were children crying, parents fighting, and it was it was a chaotic situation. And we started. We we made a train and we started singing and doing some clowning and we saw uh, the atmosphere change. So people suddenly started laughing. Children were amused. They started playing and that gave us a boost. Nice. Then uh, we kind of uh, enacted everything that we remembered from circus. So we were falling. Then another person was falling. Acts like that. 
and we clowned for five hours because this hospital is huge, and we went to all kinds of uh, pre-operative wards, post-operative wards, then inpatient wards. And when we came out, we could not st- stop smiling. So, it, of course, uh, there was this that uh, the joy of uh, being able to share smiles with so many people, especially who were in pain, and especially these were children. So, from infants to fourteen years of age, okay. and we were smile hungover. So, uh, decided that we'll do it every alternate week. And uh, for those two weeks, every time something happened with me, like I was stressed or I felt something. Triggered in me, I remembered some child smiling, and I felt better. I started smiling. So this has been a beautiful, beautiful journey, and uh, uh, I would say that this has been the most fulfilling thing to do to me. Uh, I really loved teaching, and I used to enjoy interacting with my students. And I thought this is my passion. But when clowning happened, I realized that maybe this is my calling. So I quit my job again, and then I was just clowning. For some time, but then, uh, of course, savings don't last too much. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back to teaching in 2017, and uh, late 2018, I quit again for becoming a full-time medical clown. So from just clowning on Saturdays to clowning almost four days, five days a week, I've been doing this. And also, uh, we started with just uh, government hospital. Now we also go to private hospitals, but we charge them for that. For those sessions, and we also visit. We as counselors, so counselors is a volunteer-based group, which I started, and uh, we've had about uh, 200 volunteers till date who have clowned with us. We go to old age homes, uh, of course, hospitals, then orphanages, refugee camps, and all kinds of vulnerable spaces wherever we are needed. Wow. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been doing this for now how long? Four years. So on ninth July, we completed four years. And your teaching career, which was supposed to be your main career, was how many years? I started in two thousand ten. Two thousand. Okay, so good seven year, the regular job, pay packet, and all, and now this thrown into the world of let's try and see how we to make a living out of being a counselor as a career. So the government hospital was free of charge. Yes, it is. And and the private hospital says, guys. Can you just pay us money because we need to pay the rent? <laughs> of course. And so, and so, private hospitals paid for it, or the the patients uh, paid for it. How did that work? How? What? You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Apollo Hospital in Delhi, uh, the pediatric cancer ward. There is this one doctor who is very, very children friendly, and who thinks that. Uh, when children with cancer come to the hospital they are, they feel better but when they go out they are in extreme pain so while they are at the hospital they need alternate therapies and that's why uh, she asked the csr branch to find some medical clown and that's how i was approached and uh, so it's the csr project under which they are doing art therapy and clowning comes under that so a poor hospital has a csr division Which yes. basically says we need to do something CSR, so this is a CSR activity. Let's pay these people money and do this on a regular basis. Yes. And then, uh, and then therefore another private hospital will also do the same thing, or they have another model. As of now, we haven't really been approached. I mean, they've approached us, but they don't want to pay. So most of the private hospitals end up saying they don't have money for such therapies. So we don't know how would they go about it because not every hospital has a CSR wing. Oh, okay, yeah. That's But enough. then they have this marketing budget. So if they really want to, they can definitely pay for this. Right. It, it also comes under mental health. So what we are doing is basically medical clowning is bridging the gap between physical and mental health. Because when we talk about healthcare setup, and especially hospitals, the entire focus is on the physical health. That medicine, uh, if we give them medicine injection, they will start feeling better. But the fact that so when a person is suffering physically, he is also suffering mentally, and the mental stress and anxiety takes over, and the physical pains also then obviously get aggravated. So if we take care of the mental health at that point in time, then they'll also start feeling better physically. They'll eat well, and uh, so there are uh, research that uh, says that. If a child or even adult 
if they are exposed to medical clowning before an operation the doses of anesthesia goes down even in the hospital the doctors have noticed that so they specially asked us to go to pre operative wards and work with children who are going into surgery and they saw that actually it happens that the dose is less see wow so this the how how many people are doing this in india for example there are some in bangalore Bang- there is uh, one yes yeah. there i think two or three people or groups were doing it then there is one in oroville chennai Uh, and then there is one person who is a re- retired navy officer who is doing it in mumbai he is a clown magician wow and uh, there is there is a group in ahmedabad that is us in delhi then who else is there i came across somebody who is doing it in andhra pradesh also i don't know i think maybe vizag or somewhere but i'm not too sure about them but there are people there very ha- there handful of people who are doing this So people who are watching this and are getting inspired, like, wow, who's this Shita? You know, what is she doing? I, maybe that's a career option, or it's a tough career option because you know, you've got to find people who are going to pay. But maybe it just motivates them because the same reasons that it motivated you. Uh, uh, do you guys have groups on the internet or Facebook or somewhere where they can join and ask questions and learn more and check it out if this is something they want to dive into? Just like you had some help from Ahmedabad, do you guys have some kind of forum or? so uh, people can get in touch with us on our uh, facebook or instagram page but th- there is no group but if they are really interested then we'll add them to our whatsapp group but of course they can always message me if they they want any questions to be answered i'm more than happy to do that and so your all your contact details are and are available on the website correct yes yes so guys although i was going to show this later but i'm going to show it again this right here below is the website link Uh, basically, it's www. clownsters counselors. dot com, and uh, and and so you can get in touch with her in case this is something you're interested in. It's really a fabulous idea, and I don't know. You know, I I wish um, there can be. So you guys manage. How long did it take you guys to figure out the whole Apollo? Let's get the com- commerce involved and the CSR activity, and now it's being able to pay for. How many of you are there uh, as a group? Uh, the freelance volunteers in, in clownslers so uh, apollo only allows one person so at apollo only i am allowed they don't allow any more people because oh. there are private wards so they don't want to scare away children and if there are too many clowns in one ward then it can be scary because it's uh, a lot of people i mean in private uh, private hospitals the uh, the problem is that clowns these days are only shown as an evil character So a lot of people <laughs> have developed clown phobia. Oh so, my God! This like, is uh, Hollywood movies or something or Hollywood. 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 It and all those movies. I mean, the horror movies have <laughs> clowns as evil ones. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Hello. Exactly. Uh, yeah. 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 I know. I know. So, I so yeah. there was this one time uh, we also do awareness campaigns uh-huh. using clowning as a medium. So we were doing this. Uh, a venus campaign around the uh, aravalli forest uh, when the government was taking it over for uh, highway for building a highway so we were a part of a protest and we were trying to create awareness around how we need trees and this should not be cut and there was many many school children and there was this one boy who got really scared of seeing a clown and he said that i'll talk to you but just don't ask me to open my eyes <laughs> i'm hearing everything but i can't open my eyes oh my god that oh my god Yes, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty deep. This thing that it, it's created an impression, ulta effect of the whole thing. Yes. Wow. Yes. Once a doctor got scared, she started crying at Chacha Nehru Bal which is the government hospital. So she saw us and she started crying because she had that phobia. But then she could overcome it, and uh, so I removed my wig and everything, and I said that I'm just a normal person, and clowns are also normal people. You don't have to be scared. I went and gave her a hug. She cried a little more, and then she got comfortable. So of course, phobias can be worked upon, but then yes, it can be scary at times. So that's why private hospitals don't allow too many people. Okay, tell us some of the stories. I want to know: um, uh, is there anything you'd like to talk about? I know you don't have to mention patients' names or anything, but anything course, that happened yeah. to you in the last two three years that you saw something? I don't know. Is that? 
there are many 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 okay, stories of course <laughs> but uh, i'll start with something which show sure, which was really touching and which kind of at apollo only because i was meeting these patients since i like i said these are pediatric uh, oncology wards so these are children suffering from cancer and uh, mostly i was i started going there every thursday so 70% of these children were the same children that i was 70% of these children yes were the same ones so there was this one boy who was like super happy go lucky kind of a person and uh, the first time i visited him he of course uh, was not in a very good condition but he had that uh, will to live or zeal for life and he started playing and he was laughing the next time i went he had his own smiley ball and he was like so i'm not going to play with your ball but my ball then next time he had this magic box so every time i went he had some prop of his own that he wanted to play with and if, if i got late for some reason then he, his mother would be like he has been waiting for you since morning and so weeks passed like this and i think it was 6 or 7 feet he was lying in an unconscious state and he was in a very very bad condition and this was the first time i think when i had got attached to a child so i was clowning for when a half years by then but this was like the first time when i was kind of uh, broken inside and i felt that why am i doing this so i just walked out of there and then i got to know that he might not survive he has this rare cancer but he never showed that kind of sign so he was always excited and his mother was always very supportive so i called up my mother when i left the hospital and so i said why am i even doing this i mean what sense is it making i'm not really able to help because this child is anyway going to die so the mother said that you know you can't control death there is nothing that you can do this is life and death but you can at least make this process of passing over better for him he gets so excited to see you. then i also contacted this medical clown who is in mumbai saying that i am really feeling lost right now and what do i do i i feel that i should just leave it he said that she told always remember that you need a god not a doctor all you can do is make a person smile and make their life worthwhile whatever moments they are left with maybe you know a child if he passes away uh, smiling the parents would also remember his smiling face but if he goes away crying and he's in a lot of pain then obviously parents would also be very sad so just remember what you're doing is greater than all this life and death situations and you can't really help if somebody is dying but that i think that incident really changed me as a clown as a as a person also because i started valuing things more and uh, i would say that through these four years so much has changed in me so from believing that i was an introvert to knowing that there is nothing called introvert and extrovert we all have situations where we, wherein we act like one then uh, as a clown uh, we are allowed to fail and we are allowed to make a lot of mistakes and the clown never gives up so these are lessons that i've learned through these experiences and uh, i remember that there was this one time this this year uh, it was world cancer day and uh, we had a volunteer who was uh, playing guitar with me so and there was this lady who was who couldn't move much uh, she had tubes running from her nose from her mouth and uh, her brother was that was the guardian with her and when we were singing she was trying to smile a bit but she was in so much pain that she was not even able to smile but i held her hand i was trying to just move around and then she started smiling and her brother started crying so badly because it was after months that she responded to something positively and then he came and uh, he put a 500 rupee note in my pocket and said just keep it this is from a, this is a blessing from a brother to a, uh, for her, for us for making his his sister smile so it was such a touching experience that uh, i mean of course we said that we can't take this but then he was like no you have to take it and it's just a blessing it's nothing more than that we've had the uh, grannies at government hospital giving us 10 rupees saying that it's of the kalina because uh, my grandson or my granddaughter has smiled after days and we've been waiting for them to just smile or laugh so there have been so many times when uh, parents have dropped a happy tear because their children started eating 
so something as small as eating because their children had stopped eating since the time they were admitted to the hospital there are many many such experiences almost every week we uh, have this experience so uh, last year we started doing this for adults as well in other government hospitals that we started visiting and uh, there was this one time when we were visiting and uh, there was a boy i mean there was a man i think he would be in his uh, mid 20s and we were trying to make him smile there was no guardian no buddy he was all alone and he was just hooked to his phone we tried singing we tried doing other things so there were there was another man who came from another ward who was uh, a caretaker with somebody else and he said that uh, nobody comes to meet him he has been here for 2 uh, 3 weeks now but we don't know i either he is an orphan or something so we said we are here for you you don't really have to worry and these people were taking care of him and uh, when these people came and like two, two more people came in and then we started uh, doing acts with them with him playing with him or saying things to him in a very clown way he started engaging with us and he started smiling and then he danced with us and he was very happy so the doctor said that this is the first time we have seen him react otherwise he is just lying there whenever we go we put him in injection he won't talk to anybody but this is the first time he's actually talked to somebody he's left the phone otherwise he never does that so i mean these are experiences when we think about it we feel really emotional but at that point we're like clowning and we, the only purpose is that we have to make this person react or respond to us and why we have to do this is because then medicines work better so the idea is not because it's like we are have this ego that we have to do it but then uh, responding mentally is important for physical uh, improvement fabulous this is amazing uh, i i hope uh, people uh, get inspired by this and i can imagine that uh, it's such a wonderful feeling you'll have opportunities to go through such amazing yeah. emotional highs every time and uh, really i don't know i'm a loss of words right <laughs> now <laughs> i don't know what to say i uh, i usually always i'm in control and i know what i'm going to say next but i myself <laughs> a few <laughs> Yes, coming on. I was like, control it, Rishi. Control your freaking emotions. But I said, no, forget it. If it rushes, it rushes. But good, it came back in. Awesome. It's like I almost could feel you, you experiencing those moments that you were talking about. I can literally imagine what it could feel like. So it's. Thank you. <laughs> there is a difference between performance clowning and medical clowning the basic difference is that when you are doing a performance the idea is that even a person responds or not it's okay we are doing our best but when we are clowning in a hospital setting then the idea is not to perform for them but ensuring that they engage with us so uh, it's it's not like we'll just go and perform for them it's basically that they should they they have to be involved in our act so it can be as small as okay i i remember this uh, early early clowning days when we were trying i was trying to make a girl laugh she was hardly 2 years and she was in her father's lap and she was crying continuously for 10 minutes i kept trying i tried all the acts possible she did not smile and suddenly my wig fell off and she started laughing <laughs> so any kind of if we keep them engaged and if we don't give up then there is a possibility that something will happen and they will smile so even if it is just nose falling off or even if sometimes we just fall i mean it happens that we actually fall because we don't realize that we are walking too far so we are too engaged during the rush in the act and then the child starts smiling and then he comes and tries to help us lift the or stand up so there are situations like that as well Wow, that's awesome! Amazing. So it's counselors because there's counseling involved in this process. Yeah. Well, tell, tell us more about the. So you've done, you you've done psychology or something like that? No. no I'm a sociologist and social anthropologist by training. Sorry, But, sorry. So I'm I'm a sociologist and social anthropologist by training. So I have a, I have a master's in sociology. and empirical social anthropology and these are the subjects that i was teaching 
but i have i mean i have studied a little bit of counseling i've done several of the courses around counseling but uh, in medical counseling we do not really talk to people we don't ask them what happened that's a complete no no because then we are touching the wrong nerve mm. because again we are trying we are asking them to rewind what has happened to them you so want to take them away from that exactly so clowning is also called distraction therapy mm-hmm. so it's distracting them from that pain so here when you talk about counselors as in clown first plus counselors it comes as a, as a uh, as somebody who are doing mental health i mean who are working on mental health and on improvement of mental health so instead of for uh, counseling in a regular way we are not following that way but then taking care of their mental health by not talking to them about their disease because everybody who comes to visit them talks about it the doctors are talking about it the parents are talking about it the visitors are talking about it very informative extremely powerful stuff that is happening here so uh so you all have specific target for cancer or not necessarily it could be yes. any kind of ailing and you said even old age homes you go to yes you tell us about that so even at hospitals at like for apollo it is just cancer because that's what they wanted us to deal with but at government hospitals there are all kinds of patients so they can, it's not just terminally uh, ill patients but uh, even if they're just suffering from viral or a headache we would cater to them as well at old age homes the idea is to make them feel wanted so the worst form of for uh, i think the feeling that uh, elderly people are going through at old age homes is that they've been uh, thrown away of their houses and nobody comes to visit them so they they have stopped feeling wanted or they feel uh, very depressed because of the fact that they can't meet anybody and they are caged sort of at in those four walls so we go and we try and uh, make them relive their childhood So we or their uh, older days maybe so singing black, those songs from black and white movies or playing small small games like those tal- simple acts or just playing with a balloon or a ball that makes them really happy sometimes just sitting with them and listening to them talk and listening to them sharing so, so there's so many uh, uh, oldies we've met who are writers or uh, when they were young they used to dance or sing so when they, we just sit there and listen to them and that makes them very happy so because they, there is nobody who listens to what they write so things like that so here clowning is very different because uh, it's it involves more uh, one on one conversations and just uh, being there so we can hug them we can comfort them at hospitals we have strict protocols of no touch because we don't want to give out infections So the maximum we can do is uh, a high five or a handshake. That too, if we can avoid, we'll avoid. But that's the maximum, and then we'll keep sanitizing. That's something that we we'll have to be very careful about. Also, we don't want to end up uh, doing any harm. So, since it is a volunteer-based group, uh, what if there is somebody who abuses them? So that's why there is a strict no touch rule. But at old old age homes, we go and we hug them, hug them really tight. and mostly wherever we have gone at old age home they've asked us when are you going to come back so every birthday like every birthday of clownslers we celebrate it at old age home because that makes them really happy at refugee camps then they uh, it happens in a very different way we play with them then we also try and teach them things like around hand hygiene or trauma prevention so or even around sexual abuse that how we can avoid it and how we can talk to somebody so in a very playful clowning way we try and give them messages so we also do awareness campaigns i also do clowning workshops for school children around the world yeah tell me about that what's what's the workshop all about so uh, these are customizable workshops but the main thing that i focus on is whatever i have learned through clowning so like i was talking about making mistakes then discovering our own selves expressing i think we've been trained not to express so if we are feeling pain we have been told that you have to smile and all these patriarchal notions around be a man and you can't cry so around the expressing all kinds of emotions and how all emotions are equally important there is no good or bad emotion so if if we have to really feel happy or know what happiness is then we are also have to understand sadness otherwise how do we know what makes us happy so things like these in a 
clowning way and then of course so a little bit of uh, bits and pieces of clowning as a theatrical form so how can we express more and how how we can make simple acts in an exaggerated way when we do it how we can make them fun so it can just be that uh, sim- as simple as i have a broken uh, i have a uh, flat tire so how can i make that fun or a mundane task like mopping the floor how can how can we make these fun so workshops around these then i'm also doing stress management sessions for corporates because i think stress is only present now and fresh in my diet so this is something that i'm focusing on so um so i'm just thinking that basically if you have a uh, you you clowning or oh, clown what's it called counseling no is it called clown it is clowning clowning so clowning as a as a responsibility let me put it that way not as a task or a job or a function as a responsibility okay it cannot be done part time is that what you feel is the case it's not mm. you have no you can do it part time you can do it part time no yeah. so so you could get a job and do this and both together yes all my volunteers volunteers are doing that because as of now clowning is not a well paid job like hospitals don't want to pay even corporates when they hear clowning or play therapy so uh, what i have seen is that people don't really want to pay for happiness so so this is my experience and uh, now it's four years and for for the first year of course there were no charges involved at all but the three years i've noticed that the moment you attach a monetary value to clowning people don't want it but before that everybody is like oh wow this is such a deep brilliant thought and all of that but this is what happens so it's uh, i think it's better as of now to do it part time so my volunteers are either uh, uh, professionals or uh, even students they come on weekends and if there are evening sessions then they come for that but they all have regular things going on so how do now that in the lockdown situation how do people sign up for these workshops i mean are they done on zoom or something so yes these workshops are done on zoom and uh, these are this is like a two hour workshop where we talk about what clowning is and the first so uh, then practically doing activities around clowning how to express uh, things like that so it is really easy and and you are planning to have one this month this is all yes okay and the details for that will be on your website yes yes it will be on our website as well as all social media i see i see fabulous you guys are uh, on your website do you all have like a facebook page or something for them yes to... yes okay great so this is awesome um do you have photographs of your various clowning activities can you share some of that so sure. this workshop that you're going to do in the end of august uh, is there any uh, criteria age or uh, who should attend who should not attend you know do you have any suggestions on why somebody should attend is it only people who want to become a clownster or others can also come can you tell us about that who should attend this so anybody who is above 16 years of age can attend okay so below 16 is a challenge because they won't get it they won't understand no we have different workshops for different age groups so ah. i don't think you need to mix it up because then that can be a problem uh, i don't do workshops for less than 10 years of age because i think uh, they don't really need it they are expressive i mean till <laughs> 10 we are not so adulterated and corrupted <laughs> in our minds <laughs> we are very uh, happy to express what are we feeling but after that uh, so there are like, the socialization process gets to us So 16 years and above, because this is mainly for people who want to do clowning, maybe 
Oh. Like Not you. Not just in hospitals, yes, but anywhere. Because there can be fears attached to the hospital setting. So even if they don't want to do it in a medical setting, they can do it at other spaces. Or even if it is just about playing at home or feeling better ourselves. So crowning is not just healing therapy for people who are uh, exposed to it, but people who are doing it as well go through a healing process. So, uh, for example, when I am stressed and when I go for crowning, my stress goes away because then we stop thinking about the entire thing and uh, how uh, discovering our own clown, our inner clown, the childlike teacher, helps us get uh, get on with life. So this is also about that. So this is not really a performance oriented clowning. It's not technically clowning, but basics of clowning that involves uh, expression, emotions, how to take care of mental health through activities. So there would be very less talking, but a lot of activities that you do. You're able to do this on Zoom. Yes, <laughs> thankfully. You've got some ideas on how to do this. Yes. So I've made my mistakes, and then I've learned that okay, this works. This is. And and how how many have you done so far already in this lockdown? I think you must have increased the number. Oh uh, no! So initially, I thought that uh, clowning is not possible online. So I think for a month or one and a half, I did not do much. I was trying to go out. So during the lockdown, I went to certain homes to do clowning. So clowning for migrants, and because they were stuck and they wanted to go home, so they were very very sad. That's what I was doing. So. Entire, I think, in Eastern two lockdowns, I was doing that. So I was doing a lot of different kinds of lockdowns, and then I came home, and that's when I started from online. Online, it started because uh, one of the NGOs asked for a voluntary clowning thing that we want to make children happy. So can you come and do it for fun, etc. And that's when I started looking up, like, what can I do? What can I add? So I started adding riddles to it. Like for a clowning session, so I've done a lot of online sessions with workshops. I've just done three or four, but there have been many, many sessions around it like for children, for adults, even for COVID patients. I've made videos and shared them. So it's interesting because now I think many people have, uh, because of the lockdown, they have kind of figured out how to do things online. Uh, yes, it would be interesting to find out how you are doing this, uh, which you yourself thought was not going to be possible to do online. You figured out ways to do that. So you're saying it's two hours. Yes, it's two, two hours. hours. Yeah. Of course, sir. Uh, the when you're doing it physically, it's way more the uh, fun, right. and uh, then of course you can feel the vibes and get energy from each other. Online, that is a challenge, but then we can still learn. Yeah, sure. Why not? And uh, in terms of um, uh, you do this like what once a month or is it just you doing one off as and when? Yeah, one one. Off. So this is like the first that we are doing it as an open session. Otherwise, we were doing we were collaborating with people. So I've done different uh, workshops with different organizations so far, and it has mainly been for children. There have been one or two adult workshops. How many people can attend one? How many can you really handle at any given point of time? I think eighteen to twenty. Eighteen to twenty people is manageable. Yes. Beyond that, might be a challenge. Yes, then I would probably be able to concentrate much, and then right. it would be difficult. So I mean, I won't be able to see them on screen. Like I Correct. have to keep scrolling. Correct. Correct. Awesome. Fabulous. This is great. Uh, so, guys. You know, this is this is an awesome conversation I've had, obviously, and and um, I if you guys want to get in touch with she tell us here's the website again. Uh, workshop details hopefully should be out by the time this video is out, because today is the 19th. I don't know when I'm going to get this video out. Maybe by 21st or 22nd I should have the video out. But uh, awesome conversation, she tell. Thank you so much for doing this, and I hope to connect with you again. Maybe six months, one year, and to find out where things are on the clowning world, clown, clowns, sillers, clowns. <laughs> thank you, thanks a lot. This was actually a wonderful conversation. So thank you. Finally, this happened. <laughs> Finally, that happened. <laughs> okay, great.